name Spawn Point. Uh, Jem, what are you doing back there? I'm working on some ideas for Nintendo Labo. Cool. Uh, well, coming up on the show... We try to survive the dangerous depths of Subnautica. <laughs> Plus, some co-op with colourful friends in Kirby Star Allies. And Jem gets hands-on okay. with Nintendo Labo. <laughs> Isn't that right, Jem? Oh. Help. Yeah. Help! Help! She'll be fine. Everyone's favourite marshmallowy hero is back in Kirby Star Allies. This colourful platformer is very similar to previous Kirby games with short levels, simple mechanics and easy combat. And of course, Kirby's signature move is back. A huge vacuum cleaner inhale which allows him to adopt the abilities of the creatures he's swallowed. You know what they say, you are what you eat. And that saying has never been truer than in the case of Kirby. But that's not the only trick he has up his sleeve. Kirby can also swallow air and float indefinitely. When you put an ability like that in a platforming game, it loses a lot of its challenge. While a story isn't the most gripping part of a game like this, there is an intro cutscene. A dark crystal heart has exploded, scattering pieces all across the world. It's then up to Kirby to go and investigate and set things right. But the pink puffball doesn't have to go it alone. After all, this is Kirby Star Allies, not Kirby Star Solo. Up to three friends can join you on your quest, either computer or player controlled. These teammates can also combine abilities with you to increase your attack or allow you to solve puzzles. Now, I love a good co-op game. Getting to work alongside my pals is my fave. But I do have to say, I think you're better off with the AI in this case. Ah, oh, Rad, I'm glad to see you finally recognise the objective superiority of artificial intelligence. No, Darren, that's not actually what I was saying. I mean, in general... I we think... cybernetic life forms are indeed better in every possible way. Ah, oh, goodbye. But you are right, Rad, the AI does come in very handy. In fact, you can literally just avoid fighting altogether and let your buddies take care of it for you. This actually takes away some of the enjoyment for me. I don't think a game has to be difficult in order to be fun, but this was way too easy. It practically plays itself. Yeah, it's a weird feeling to be playing a game where you don't actually have to play the game. There are jigsaw pieces to find and some light puzzling thrown in, but you can virtually finish the game just by moving and floating in the right direction. I think the only time I died was when I jumped thinking there was a platform below the view of the screen, and there wasn't. Yeah, it's mind-numbingly easy. It's like the anti-cuphead. I really like that description, but funnily enough, Rad, I actually started to enjoy that after a while. There's something nice about just plodding along and finishing some easy levels. I didn't itch to play more between sessions like I would with a great game that I'd really fallen in love with, but I had some fun while I was playing it. Yeah, that's a fair call. It does manage to be rather delightful. The game is highly polished, everything is cute and cartoony, and it's all about friendship. Aww! And I particularly liked just floating around the little hub world map on a shooting star. Aww! Yeah, the game has a real sense of whimsy to it, and I think they did a really good job mixing up the gameplay. There's water to swim in, cannons to be fired out of, and all manner of different abilities to acquire, many of which are funny. Overall, the whole thing was way too easy. I mean, even the boss battles had zero challenge. You may look big, but you're just a huge softie whose attacks I don't even have to dodge. Weak sauce! I think Kirby Star Allies is best suited to younger spawnlings based on how easy it is. But if you're a Kirby fan looking for something to sit back and play, it's not a bad time. I'm giving it three out of five rubber chickens. See, this is a hard one for me because it's not a bad game. It's just so easy to the point that it actually feels a bit pointless. I'm going to give it two out of five rubber chickens. Mm hmm, crisp. Wait, when are we getting some rad size jackets? Hello! It's time for the scoop, and scoop we will! First up, Pokemon Go gets a major update with the introduction of new storytelling and quest elements. The update includes the addition of field research activities that come from spinning Pokestops and special research where you'll be enlisted by Professor Willow to help with his projects. 
Players can earn in-game rewards for research tasks, some that will lead to unique storylines, like finding out more about the mythical Pokemon Mew, who is also being added to the game. That's right, there's a Mew Pokemon in Go Town. <laughs> How amusing. In other news, the original Crash Bandicoot developer's Bible is now available as a hardcover book. The Crash Bandicoot Files gives readers a glimpse of some early concept sketches and level designs and reveals the fact that Crash was originally going to be called Willy the Wombat. Can you imagine what that might have meant for the game series? I'm guessing there would have been a lot more borrowing and other wombat-y things. And I suppose the answer to the question, will he or won't he, is he won't. Be Willy the Wombat. And finally, the winners of the Sea of Thieves quest for golden bananas have been announced. One of the many publicity efforts around the release of Sea of Thieves was the launch of an international digital treasure hunt. The prize? Four 18-carat gold bananas. The winning team was the hair crew from France, with the Australian Swash Buckley's placing as one of four finalist crews. As well as the lucrative loot, the hair crew also earned some special in-game pirate outfits, while runners-up received limited edition doubloons. Ah, that be some sweet booty. My personal tip for the winners, don't try and bite into your golden banana, even if ye be on the brink of scurvy. It's hot enough chewing through the skin. Oh. And now it's time for an extra scoop. <laughs> This week, we have a squiz at the Legend of Zelda Shrub of Destiny. That's right, Shrub of Destiny. During a trip to Germany, actor slash Zelda fan Kurt Quinn made a short film recreating a day in the life of Link. In this live action parody, Link rescues hapless villagers from perilous mishaps, like being stuck in a bush or stuck on a wall. Situations I'm sure we can all relate to. And that's it for The Scoop this week. If you've come across something particularly scoop-worthy for Extra Scoop, drop us a line here. Oh, I'm still not sick of talking like a pirate. It never gets old, but it comes in waves. At the beginning of the year, Nintendo shocked the world by announcing the next big Switch accessory completely out of nowhere. And it's made of cardboard. That's right, I'm talking about Nintendo Labo. I'm dropping in for a quick sneak preview and you're coming with me. Let's go. Of course, before you can play with it, you have to make it. And I'm gonna need a bit of help with that. I'm here with Jordan and Isabel and we're gonna start making the RC car. Are you guys excited? Yeah. Yeah? Press it down for me. There we go. Oh, there we go. Oh. So it's really easy to pop out. I'm a bit scared. They feel fragile, but they're actually quite durable once they're there. It just takes a bit of work to make sure you're pressing on the right bits. But Isabel's helping me out here. Here we go. So now that we've built our little RC, the most important part is now making it our own. We're going to customise it with some cool textures. We've got glue, we've got sticky tape. You guys... Scissors. Hey, we have scissors too. We're going to make this a good game spawn point RC unit. So I'm going to get ready. Let's do this. OK, here we go. And sticky tape. <laughs> a massive mess, but that's all part of the fun. So now we're going to go race our cars. And Belle, what's ours called? Yeah. Ours is called Jet. So this is our little one right here. She's super cute. <laughs> OK, ready, guys? Yeah. On your marks, get set, race! Uh-oh, it looks like a bent leg has stopped our colourful creation in its tracks. <laughs> no! Ugh, I wonder if going with cardboard was a risky move by Nintendo. the fastest race, but I feel like we definitely won prettiest car. Oh well, let's see what else Lebo has to offer. Let's go. So I'm playing the motorbike game now. So you sit it against your chest like this, the throttle accelerates, and you twist to turn, and you actually have to lean into it, which feels really realistic and also mildly terrifying. And you pick up these little hangs to go faster. At the moment, I'm in first place, which so far hasn't happened at all. It feels really cool because it's a full body. You have to get really into those turns if you want to make them. No! <laughs> oh, wait! Oh! So we have a little house here, and you have these little knobs and dials that you put into, uh, pop into the sides of them, and it unlocks different combinations. So, like, this one looks like a little mobile in his little house, and then you turn the dial. He's asleep right now, but I think we can wake him up if I spin this enough. <laughs> and he wakes up. So... 
one does. While the creature was really cute, it didn't feel like there was much to it. There were some mini games that I didn't get a chance to play in this demo, but I would have loved there to be a pet raising mechanic in there just to give it a bit of depth. I can move things around the house. <laughs> I feel kind of bad though. So basically what you've got here is your basic keyboard, so give it a go. Then you've got these dials here, so you can actually use them to change the sound. So we'll go number one. So the slot that you see up here, I'll let you put that one in. Just here? Yep. Oh! Excellent. Now you've got cats. It's right. made of cats. This is my dream come true. And cat sounds were just the beginning. It turns out this little piano is a full-blown composing tool with more settings than you could shake a Joy-Con at. There's so much happening in yeah. one small box. That's what I said. We haven't hit the cool stuff. We just oh, hit the cool stuff wow. now. Of course, once I found the old man chorus setting, the others didn't matter. <laughs> OK, we're into the fishing now. I'm looking at this in the real world. Let's see if I'm any better in the game. OK, <laughs> come on, fishy. Go. And then we'll yes! see you back towards you. That's it. So you caught your first mackerel. I got a mackerel! <laughs> Whoa. Come on, fishy. The fishing rod was quite responsive. String vibrated when I got a bite, the reel clicked as I turned it. It made me feel like I was actually fishing. <laughs> but the game itself is really just a fishing mini game. I couldn't see myself playing this for hours, but in my short play, I had a really good time. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, got away. <laughs> This is so cool. So stomping makes me move. Punching lets me hit things. The last really cool thing. Now I'm a car. And... I am exhausted. This is so much fun, though. I could play this all day. But for now, I'm going to go take a rest. <laughs> all in all, I feel like Labo is a bit of a mixed bag. It's fun to get creative and build, but in the end, the games are a bit simplistic. No. I think we'll need to see what else it can do before we decide to hold it or fold it. Doki, you've got questions? And we've got answers. So let's get cracking. First up, we have a video from Jake. Hi, Spawn Point. My name is Jake and I've got a couple of questions for you. One, how many kingdoms are there in Super Mario Odyssey? Two, what is your favourite Mario game? Thank you. Bye. Wow, thanks, Jake. Mamma mia, that is a really cool Mario-themed room you have. It's so cool. Uh, now to the business of numbering kingdoms in Super Mario Odyssey. There are currently 14 kingdoms plus three extra kingdoms you can explore after you've completed the main story. That's right. Hey, I have an idea to spice up the answering of this question with a little extra challenge spice. I mean, if you're keen, Goose. Challenge spice? I'm intrigued. Reckon you could list all 14 of the main story kingdoms in rapid fire? You know what? I think I probably could. Challenge accepted. Yes. Uh, maybe we should dust up the old BAM button for this one. I mean, it's got to be around here somewhere. Is it... Oh! There it is. Uh, how handy. Thanks, hand. Oh, uh, what do you say? Can you handle it? Can you? Can you handle the BAM? Yep. Can you? Yes, I think I can handle the BAM too. All right. So, ready? Steady? <clears throat> Mum's spaghetti? Go! Uh, OK, there's the Cap Kingdom, ben. Uh, Cascade, ben. Sand, ben. Lake, ben. Wooded, ben. Cloud, ben. Lost, ben. Metro, ben. Seaside, ben. Snow, ben. Uh, Luncheon, ben. Ruined, ben. Bowser's Kingdom ben. and... Oh, come on! Oh, oh uh, Moon Kingdom! <laughs> yes, you did it! Oh, good job, Goose. Oh, well, thanks, Shred. I, I, I'm pretty tired. I'm, can I use uh, a little bit of water or something now as well? To, uh, thank you very much. Uh, and a towel. I just need to thank you. Dust off there as well. A little bit of potassium. I'm a bit worn out now. Do we have any bananas left? Ah, perfect. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you. Yum. Do you have any puppies? No. Mm. Hmm. Nothing. Oh, OK. Well, now Jake wants to know our favourite Mario game. So, what's yours, Goose? Oh, uh, well, you know what? I have to say Super Mario 64. 
I remember how cool it was to see Mario in 3D for the first time, and I just loved being able to run around, exploring the castle and jumping into paintings. How about you, Rad? Uh, I'm gonna go with Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. I thought it was great to see something a bit different from Mario. Plus, I really liked the strategy elements. It's tricky, but still accessible. That's yeah, a good choice. Now, on to our next question, and this one is from Ben in Western Australia. One, in Terraria, how much harder does it get once it is hard mode? Two, what is the hardest boss in Terraria? Three, is Terraria coming out on the PS4? Four, in Minecraft, from one to ten, how much do you like a glass floor with lava under it? Thanks, Ben. How hard is Terraria's hard mode, you ask? Well, they don't call hard mode hard mode because it's a cakewalk. Oh, I would definitely play a cakewalk mode, though. Uh -huh. If it involved, say, a cake biome? Oh, yum! That would really take the cake. But back to hard mode. Once you have triggered hard mode by defeating the wall of flesh, you'll be up against all sorts of new challenges. Like more difficult mobs, higher prices in shops, and spreading crimson or corruption. Ooh. Plus, it's not possible to reverse hard mode for that world once you start. The key is to be well prepared. For example, I would recommend you stock up on essentials and create a solid, quarantined base before you defeat the wall of flesh. You'll also want to make sure you have ample health and mana available, plus solid weapons and armor. And of course, the best way to find out if hard mode really is hard is to give it a try yourself. There's lots of online guides to give you more detailed tips if you get stuck or you just want some extra help. I will say the bosses can be pretty tough in hard mode, which leads us to Ben's next question about the hardest bosses in Terraria. Ooh, maybe we should check with Darren on that one. It seems like the kind of data that he would have on file, because, you know, he loves data so much. <clears throat> Hello. Hey, Darren. Rad and Goose here with a Terraria boss question for you. Oh. Ben would like to know what the hardest boss is in Terraria. Ah, let me access that information. Ah, it seems that Moon Lord is the final boss in Terraria as of the current version. He has a combined health of 145,000. Even more if you happen to be playing in expert mode, which is the most health of any boss in the game. Although it's possible that different players might be challenged by different bosses in different ways based on their own playstyles. Yeah, well, that Moon Lord is pretty darn creepy looking too, yeah. Uh, hey Darren, while we've got you, uh, could you also please check if Terraria is coming out on PS4? Affirmative. In fact, Terraria is already available on PS4. Oh, oh. fantastic. Um, thanks Darren, very helpful. Bye for now. No problemo. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. All right, now to your last question, Ben, about how much we like a glass floor with lava under it in Minecraft. Personally, I think it's pretty cool because it's like you're walking on lava without that whole, you know, getting burnt by lava element. Plus, it reminds me of that game you can play IRL, you know, where you pretend the floor is lava. Yeah. Uh, I give it eight and a half out of ten. See, I'm not so sure I'm the biggest fan of glass floor over lava. Oh. Lava. I just don't think I would trust it. I mean, what if you accidentally fall in? Then you'd be headed straight for Lava Town, where it is very, very hot. I would not love it that at all. I give it four out of ten. Yeah, good point. All right, moving on to our next question, which is from Jessica in Melbourne, the ACT. Hang on, that can't be right. Oh, no, there it is. Oh. Hi, Jessica. If you don't answer this, I will blow up your Xbox slash PS. Hi, good game, Spawn Point. I was wondering, do you know when the new Harry Potter at Hogwarts mystery game is coming out? Please answer this, BC. I know that a lot of people are wondering the same question. Thanks, Jessica. Last we heard, the Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery Mobile RPG is coming out in spring 2018. But this most likely refers to spring in the Northern Hemisphere. So that would be uh, the autumn here. Yeah, so I guess if all goes well, that means it could be out within the next month or so. Ooh, but if you want to be in the loop with your finger on the pulse or in the pie, fans are encouraged to pre-register or sign up online to receive news and updates about when the game is ready to download. It's also worth mentioning that there is another Harry Potter mobile game coming out at some point too. Indeed! This one will be an augmented reality game called Wizards Unite from developer Niantic who made Pokemon Go. So some exciting things there for the Potterites among us. A whole lot of Potter. And that's all we have time for today. If you've got a question, you can go here and send it in. And remember to keep sending us those video questions for your chance to hit the big time. Yeah, the big time. The, the big time being Ask SP. Well, I mean, is there any time bigger than Ask SP? Huh? Look how big our screen is. Plunging into the submerged world of Subnautica, you'll come face to face with all sorts of strange and wondrous sights that will literally take your breath away. So strap on those fins, top up that air tank, and maybe bring a spare wetsuit. It's time to head into the deep. <gasps> to 
detecting volcanic activity and several unusual electromagnetic signatures in the region. Subnautica is a survival exploration game brought to us by Unknown Worlds Entertainment. And it's actually been in early access for over four years now, with this, the complete version, looking very different from its initial build. It's rare to see a game successfully make that transition from early access to full release. And in the case of Subnautica, it looks like it was well worth the wait. The scope of this open world is truly awe-inspiring. And there's a rather riveting story to pull you through it all, too. The game opens to find you fleeing a doomed spacecraft in an escape pod. Launch in three, two, one. After a little knock to the noggin, you awake to discover you've crash-landed on a planet that looks to be made up entirely of ocean, with only your enormous flaming wreck of a ship to use as a point of reference. So it's into the deep blue sea you must go to scavenge for parts, explore for crafting materials, and hunt for wildlife to keep you alive while you await rescue. A new creature discovered. If it ever comes. Yeah, it's quite an introduction, especially when you take that first dive into the sea. Huh? It's so beautiful, and I got so swept up chasing down little alien fishies and swimming through caves that I almost forgot to come up for air. Oxygen. Which you'll have to do a lot until you find enough materials to craft an oxygen tank. And even then, you still have to resurface often to refill that. Yeah, limiting the amount of time you can spend underwater is really what makes Subnautica play differently from other survival games out there. It drives you to make the most of every second you're submerged. Plus, everything you craft in the game is designed to let you stay under for longer. Starting out, most materials are only a few feet from the surface allowing you to craft basic items like a torch, repair tool and flippers, all using a nifty fabricator. But you'll soon be required to venture further from the safety of your pod, which requires more advanced tech designed from blueprints and scanned wreckage. Head off without the right gear and you'll quickly find yourself out of your depth. Or worse, fish food. Oh, don't get me started on some of those creatures. What is it about underwater stuff that makes everything a hundred times scarier? Oh, well, monsters aside, it is a really compelling gameplay loop. As you explore, you're forced to take risks to reach rarer materials, using these to craft items that then allow you to venture deeper to find more materials and so on. And it never feels like busy work because you're always striving for that new shiny piece of equipment. The vehicles in particular are a real game changer. Welcome aboard, Captain. I actually played heaps of the early access and I was just as happy to sink more of my time into this version just so I could continue to live out my dreams as some kind of spacey marine biologist. It's a real job. Pays the bills. Scanning items to add to my data pad, finding new species, sorting out materials into specific categories. It feels like science fiction with emphasis on the science. Well, alien science. Yeah, fortunately the fiction side of it's all great too. This is Avery Quinn of Trading Ship Sunbeam. While the majority of the storytelling is done through radio transmissions and audio logs, there are events that will send you off to explore other crashed pods and even salvage supplies and gear from the enormous wrecked shuttle itself. Which is leaking radiation, always exploding and surrounded by giant sea monsters. So, you know, maybe be careful. While these objectives are essential to eventually leaving the blue planet, I found there was no pressure to be completing them quickly. So you're free to spend as much time as you want stocking up on resources, exploring new areas, and eventually even building an underwater habitat to call home. You look like you could use some coffee. Setting up a little research facility on the ocean floor not only gives you somewhere to sort out all your materials and equipment, but it's a delight to create a space to just sit and stare into the deep. <sighs> it can get really lonely sometimes, though, just you in the big blue. So maybe one day I'd like to see a cooperative mode or multiplayer introduced so I could, you know, bring along a scuba buddy and use them as bait. Ugh. I don't know, I think I liked the isolation. It really added to that atmosphere of being stranded all alone. I think that's where the success lies in a game like Subnautica. By taking an environment not often explored to this depth and completely submerging the player in it, you're left with an experience that feels new and mysterious and exciting, but all the while familiar. It's a real testament to the amount of development time poured into this game. I'm giving it four out of five rubber chickens. Yeah, few games out there really capture that sense of wonder and exploration like Subnautica. There are moments from this game I will never forget, even the ones I might try to. It's true, life under the sea is better than anything they've got up there. I'm giving it four and a half out of five rubber chickens. <laughs> ah! Oh, again! Oh. I'm never getting in the bath. Ever again. The water is a bad, bad place. <sighs> 
Real fact, we've only explored about 5% of all ocean here on Earth. I bet you there's aliens in there! Well, before we solve the mysteries of the seas, we must crack a different case. Next week on the show, we team up with the Pokemon Gumshoe, Detective Pikachu. Just two more questions. What happened after the fight? Plus, I go on a long excursion to see how game music is made. Basic idea, it's just a little piano thing and you can just sort of make it into anything. All of gaming's mysteries solved right here. See you next week. Jim out. Right out. Goose out.